So welcome everyone to this uh, lunch and learn this week on the new features in ZMED version 31 and 32. Uh, remember, actually it looks like most of you are regulars, um, to keep to mute your microphone by clicking on the microphone symbol on your toolbar on the side there. Uh, you can also minimise it if you like by clicking on the little red arrow there or orange arrow. And feel free to leave any questions in the chat section and if I do have time I will cover them at the end or if I don't I will just respond individually uh, to you there. So in the session today, I'll be covering several new features, um, going over several new features available in versions 31 and 32 of ZMED. Um, but 32 at the moment is a limited release, uh, but as soon as possible, that'll be released uh, to everyone at the moment. So I'll be going through details of increased security, notifications, two-way SMS, that's replies to SMSs, clinical summary views, uh, safe script and electronic prescribing. As I say, out of all of these, um, the electronic prescribing is the only one that, that's specific to version 32. Let's see what was the next one there. Yeah, let's go back there. Okay, so if we jump over to the ZMED I've got ready here. As we see on the left hand side, I'll just full screen that there, opening up ZMED. You'll notice in version 31 of ZMED from then onwards, we no longer have a drop down with the username. So if the last person, if you weren't the last person to log in there, you will have to type the username in there. That's also another uh, security feature. So I'll just put his password in here. Okay, now you notice in the top right corner of the screen there, as we've logged in, it's already, it's popped up a couple of notifications. You see they fade away after a few moments, that there was some intramail messages and some unpro, unactioned uh, SMS messages. These red ones um, are part of uh, Microsoft Windows. They will pop up briefly and go away. But below those there, you can see It'll, inside Office, it'll leave these notifications in here as well that don't go away until we specifically choose to close them or action those things. So it's saying that we have an unread intramail message and we have some unactioned SMS messages. We'll get to the SMS messages a bit later on. So that's one of the new features, more visibility of those notifications. Okay, just check my list. Right, so some of the security settings we've got. If we go into the management tab, down to practice setup, and in practice, here you'll notice in the lower half here, and this is in the practice setup here, there's new settings for passwords. Now, it's up to you as the practice manager or administrator of a particular site, whether you add in these extra security settings around the passwords. So in this particular case, this test site I've got here, the complexity is turned off and all of those sorts of things. But if you like, you could increase the level of complexity that the passwords need to be. You can require a number, a punctuation and so on. You can also require that your staff members reset their password after a certain number of days. Zero means means it'll keep it won't require a, a, a password reset. So, despite these settings as well, even if you have all of these settings off, from now onwards you will need at least eight characters in your ZMED passwords. It won't change any existing password that you've got. But if you do put in a requirement that it be reset after a certain number of days, then when you next need to change your password, you'll have to go by whatever settings you've put in here. So that's the extra security, some of the extra security settings there. 
Um, in case people were also used to be using the administrator login Medipack, uh, that's also been removed. People will need to create their own administrator login there. Right, close out of that section there. Let's see, I can show, what I can show you next is the summary views in clinical. Those of you familiar with the doctor's half of the software, will note that's what we're opening here. So if we open a patient in clinical, oh, maybe Hemsworth. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice here that the summary views are now no longer um, all along the top there. They're down the left-hand side, which we found uh, quite a bit more convenient. And they're always going to be stay in this particular order here. The previous one uh, used to move around the list, of, um, the list of topics to try and make it more convenient for which one you were going for. This one is just always going to be down the left-hand side. Obviously, I'm viewing this on fairly small screen, so it's all squished in a little bit there. I wonder whether I can drag this out a bit. And you see if you do squish it in too small, it will revert into the old format. But normally, if you've got a normal size screen, it will be all down the left-hand side, like you saw initially there. Okay, so that was, that was the summary views in clinical. Two-way SMS is a feature that's um, been uh, quite demanded for a long time. They're very popular and a lot of sites are now are converting over to it. It's up to you whether you want to receive messages, uh, re reply messages from your patients, but you can also use them uh, in certain ways I'll show in a moment to respond back to appointment reminders. In order to set up two-way SMS inside your ZMED, go to management here, practice setup, and this is in the specific branches. See, I've got a range of different branches here. I might open the Melbourne one, and down to options down the bottom here. On the right hand side here, you see here's the settings for your SMS service. They look a little bit different because these sections are now greyed out. You no longer require them for most for, for the our, the main companies we support. So the two the main two companies we support who do two way SMS are SMS Central and SMS Everyone. So if you want to do two way SMS through ZMed. You want, to, you want to contact SMS Central or SMS Everyone and get an account set up with them. They're a third party company, completely independent from ZMED, which is those the two we're compatible with. Now, when you do sign up with one of those, they will give you a username and a password, but also you will need to get a fixed phone number to be to be using with them. So with the ZMED two-way SMS, specifically with the ZMED two-way SMS, you do require a fixed mobile number set up with, you know, whichever company you pick, SMS Central or SMS Everyone. There was some initial confusion with some sites about that, but we do absolutely require a fixed phone number to be used in that purpose and that's something you'll have to set up with SMS Central or SMS Everyone. When you set up the account with them or whatever credits you need and you know put the the sender in, phone number in there, username, password and so on and obviously you'll need to tick enable two-way SMS below there. Underneath that, you see there's also the option to enable auto cancel of appointments. I'll, show, I'll elaborate with that in just a moment, but that's where the patient themselves will be able to respond uh, to cancel 
their upcoming appointment. Alternatively, you can have it so that it just alerts you when the patient wants to cancel their appointment. If you have this particular auto cancel option off, then the patient's appointment will simply disappear from the appointment book instead of being flagged. There's pros and cons, it's up to you whether you'd prefer auto cancel or not. Close out of that there. And you, as a reminder, that's set under branches. So if you've got several branches, you will need to set it up in the options for each of those individually, even if the settings are the same. All right, so there's a few different ways. In the past, ZMed had a number of ways to send out SMSs to the patients, but now we have even more. So one of the new popular ways to do it, if we open up a patient, here's a patient profile. On the left-hand side here, under the eHealth option, you've now got a messages tab. If you select that, you'll see messages sent to and from that patient over time. All sorts of things there. You can also use this section down the bottom here to um, send a direct message to that particular patient. Something like that. And that will go specifically to that patient. Another screen where you can see a whole heap of this information is if you move across to the management tab. Now on the management tab, we also have this messages option now. This is the main messages screen. By default, this screen here will show the messages sent and received within the last day. So we can change this particular date range here. Now it's showing the messages sent to and from those patients, um, sorry, to and from our patients uh, since the start of the year. Obviously a test server, so it doesn't have too many there. The ones in bold are the ones that need to, that the system thinks that we need to do something about, that we need to action. We need to manually look into it. You can see this one at the top. If the patient has replied to one of our appointment reminders to say that he wants to cancel the appointment because we don't have, because we don't have auto cancel switched on, it will flag it as something we need to specifically look into. Maybe we need to be calling the patient and telling them there's going to be a fee for cancelling this late, or maybe we just want that extra double check of making sure that they really wanted to cancel that appointment. Either way, you can see up the top here, we've got the markers actioned one, so options. So after any of these ones, have actually been, have after we've done the work, done whatever is required, we've actually canceled the appointment or whatever, we can come in and manually mark those ones as action so they will no longer be bold. As you can see below the range there, we've also got, we can choose the status of it, but more importantly, the different message categories. So the message categories obviously received as messages that we've that have come back from the particular patient um, and reply, reply a specific, so received a messages, just arbitrary messages that we may have received from the client, reply messages are specifically messages where the patient has sent us why or in. I'll cover that again in a moment. Direct messages are messages that we've sent from the patient profile, so messages like the one I was showing you before, we we're reminding them to pay their invoice. Appointment reminder, that's the standard 
SMSs that go out, reminders about appointments. I'll cover all of these in a moment. Results, results are the ones sent by doctors or nurses from clinical. Recall, obviously sent out of the recall system. And bulk SMSs are the ones sent out from the patient services report. I'll go through and show you some of the different sections there. So the most popular section, it was partly already there in, um, in versions of ZMed before 31, is sending your patients appointment reminders. If you go into daily reports there, appointments. Those, many of you will probably have been using this feature previously. We've got this on the, even though we can just use this for, for a report on the appointments, down the bottom here, we've got the option send appointments via SMS. Like I say, that's not a new feature at all with the, you know, the ability to view the default SMS message in there. We can just send off to those patients there. But now, just for messages, just for SMS messages used from this section here, you can reply to them. So not the SMS messages sent in any other way, not my reminder about the, well, that's right. When I say reply, you can always send a reply through, but only replies to appointment report ones will be considered um, as confirmation or cancellation of SMSs. So if I've sent out an SMS about a particular appointment, let's see. So let's see what appointments we're on today. drag things around my screen. Here's the appointments that are on today, a report of the appointments on today. And you can see via this SMS column down here, it's with ticks in it, that I've sent SMSs out for all of those appointments there. We'll have a look in the appointment book to see whether the patients have responded to any of them. Let's go to the appointments book under reception. Zoom in a little bit there. And here we go, oh, I'll make that a little bit bigger. Got several different appointments here that I've SMSed about. You could see this particular, pa this particular appointment here, the patient had sent back his, the little tick symbol to the left of it, indicates that the patient has responded to the SMS we sent out about this and responded with either the letter Y or the word yes. And that's why it's marked this as confirmed. Later in the day here, you see we've also got another one, this time with a little X on it. So the patient has responded to the SMS we sent out about this one uh, with either the letter N or the word no. They have to specifically put one of those codes, so N or no or Y or yes. If they put anything else in the message or they, or if they say something like, yeah, sure, or something like that, uh, that won't be accepted. So it's often a good idea if you're writing a specific SMS message going out, you want to ask them in the message, you want to say, please respond with Y or N uh, to confirm or cancel your appointment, something like that to, to encourage them to respond in that particular way. Now, as mentioning before, with the auto cancellation, if auto cancellation was had been on when we'd received the response for this particular appointment here, we would no longer see this appointment. This appointment would have been deleted automatically. Like I say, it's up to you whether you want to use the auto cancellation feature or not. Some sites love it, some sites don't. Head back to that messages section. And you can see on the page here, the replies we've received. So there's, so there's some, we've sent some reminders out. 
Oh, there's a reminder I sent this morning about the first one. I got a confirmation message three minutes later from Chris Hemsworth that yes, he was coming to that appointment. See later on, notif notified him about this other appointment. You see at the end there, as we can say, it says please respond N to cancel or Y to confirm. We can see from this one that is responded N, but because we had auto cancellation switched off, instead of deleting it, it's just flagged it with us here as an item that we need to action. So even though you can send out SMSs from other spots in the system, that's the only one where you need a specific kind of response. People, I could send out the, inv the personalized invoice, the direct message to say, you know, remember to pay your invoices, but it, it doesn't matter whether they reply Y or N or whatever else to that particular sort of message there. So just to quickly go through some of those other sections where we can send out SMSs now. So still under the management section here, we can go into reports and recalls. So if you're sending out recalls to your patients, there's now the option send a recall via SMS. And you could obviously pick the particular conditions on the right hand side there. Also under reports there, we've got patient service report. This is the main report where you can pick a variety of different uh, filters on your particular patients. You know, the postcode, age, when they were last in, so on, also what particular services they've, they've received. You could put an SMS message in down the bottom there. Like I say, this is the one that comes up as bulk in the report there. And as mentioned before, I don't think I need to show it to you right now, the the um, the result ones are sent out from the results inbox in clinical by the doctors there. That was the management messages section down there. Received, reply, direct, appointment reminder, result, recall, and bulk. Okay, so. Ah, there was another section to show you um, briefly in the um, clinical records. Just pop back into that one there. And there we go. We can see the summary views again there on the side. Like I say, it's not a good, not generally a good idea to view the screen as small as I'm doing it here, but I figure it works a little bit better so that you guys can see everything. When we're in an appointment here, going into the observations tab, there's been some extra work done on the observations module here where you see it's got things like heart check and eye exam and so on that are now available as options there as well. And I'm sure you already previously noted that there's body mass index and so on there. All right, if we come back here, ah, yes. So on to, to the, the one of the main topics, SafeScript. So SafeScript in ZMED uh, requires um, you to be signed up with either, uh, I'll show you where we set that up. You need to be set up with either ERX or MediSecure. can see whether your whether your site's set up uh, to do safe script checking by going as we saw the tools menu global options and then drugs the bottom left hand corner here you'll either have if if you don't have if if you're set to none then you don't have safe script set up there should be set to either ER, the ERX or MediSecure 
there are two companies, two separate companies there um, that you would need to um, have an account signed up with one of those uh, in order for safe script checking to be able to work inside of ZMed. So I'll quickly show you how that works there. Uh, we will, you will also need for the individual doctor, so remember we need to, check, need to set the ERX or MediSecure options and global options, but then for the individual doctor, you'll need to get, you'll need to log in as them. So we logged in as P Davis and go to my options there as well. In my options, under drug options on the right hand side, so we've got enable pre-check, real-time monitoring set as well. This bit needs to be set on each individual doctor. So you may have some, you may have some doctors set up using SafeScript, but each doctor that wants to use SafeScript needs this particular option set in their My Options when they're logged in to ZMed Clinical. So it's got the pre-check in there. Let's open a patient. Right, so open this patient here. Start the encounter there. Okay, I'm going to the prescribing section. Yeah. I guess probably all of our sites are coming up, um, as in my sites and your sites, coming up with MIMS out of date. Uh, by the end of the day or some, hopefully your IT folks will be updating your MIMS drug database already. That's a normal thing for us to encounter at the start of the month. We pretty much see it on every site we log into. That's just your the third party MIMS drug database that uh, needs to be updated each month. Okay. So I'm going to prescribe methadone for this particular patient. Click on find, and then I'll select one of these to prescribe to the patient. I'll just pick some nonsense up the dosage up the top here. Oh, and you see, even before I did that, see right up the top here, it's popped up that there's an alert exists for this patient, a safe script alert. So it's already within ZMed checked um, to see um, on the safe script website, whether there's an alert for this patient with methadone. And there is, and you would normally click on that there and it would take you through to the safe script website and you'd read any of the um, important information there. This pop-up up the top there will either come up as red like this, um, or it'll come up as orange, which is a lower level warning. And if it comes up with orange or red, it will stay on the screen. However, if I open a different patient who doesn't have a warning against them, uh, we can see. So this is the ZMed patient. and prescribe methadone to them. You see a green thing appears up the top there and then it goes away. So if there was a green banner appearing up the top there, so if, there, if SafeScript determined that there was no warnings um, for, on this particular patient, that banner will go away. We understand that some of you might prefer that the green banner always stay up on the screen there, um, but that was a government condition put on us there, that that green bar go away at the top there. But if you know, if you see it, if you see the green one up there, or if like it goes away quickly, you know that that was the one saying that there was no particular warnings. If it's an orange warning or a red warning, it'll stay up on the screen and the doctor will have the option to click on it and read the, the SafeScript website and see what the warnings were for this particular patient. Just back out of that one. Okay. 
and that's SafeScript, which is available in version 31. Now, ePrescribe, which you may have seen a number of um, a number of videos out on already in press releases, uh, isn't publicly available yet. We certainly have a number of sites set up as a community of interest at this stage uh, using version 32. And as soon as we're permitted to release that to everyone, we will. Uh, the trick, and I'll come back to this in a moment, but the trick is having enough pharmacies that are compatible with it at this stage. So in order to do electronic prescribing, I'll go out to one of these patients here, search for And the process is pretty much exactly the same. You go through the same as the normal prescribing. You go through the normal process, pick a particular medication, click on prescribe. Oops, actually, one thing I want to do, I'll just back out here for a moment. Uh, oops. Start that encounter again. Oops, closed all of clinical records. I meant to do that. Wanted to show you the full, the full end-to-end -end process. <laughs> so let's open Marianne again. We'll start an encounter. Ah, oh, yeah, maybe we will continue an existing encounter. Uh, this particular encounter, uh, yeah, I see that um, potentially she has uh, COVID-19 there. That's the particular, that's the particular problem we've assigned there. So I'll put another problem on it as well. Um, let's assign a problem to that. Maybe also put weight gain there the RFE and assign the problem. Yep, we'll assign one of those the problem. Excellent, so I've got a couple of, so as in your normal process there, being assigning a couple of problems to this patient as part of the encounter. So we'll go back into the drugs module here. And search for some random medication. Let's see, I selected this particular medication and selecting prescribe. Pick the particular dosage. You see now in the bottom right hand corner, it not only has the, the usual prescribe button, but it has prescribe electronically set there as well. If we go down to prescribe electronically instead. Uh, oh yes, I picked one of the patients that doesn't have a, um, that module there. Two moments. Drugs module. It's the trick with a, um, a test system here, using the right patients. Obviously in real life, all of your patients uh, will be registered for these things. Let me go prescribe again. Four puffs at night. Um, there we go, prescribe electronically, restricted item. Yeah. And here we go. So this is how the electronic prescription looks. So remember normally our, in a normal prescription, it would just get it ready for us to print it out. But this is an initial screen for the electronic prescription. So you'd see it's got details up the top about the doctor and the patient and so on, the medication. You can pick one of the problems that we added in for the clinical indication here, or we can just free type over the top of that. 
if this particular medication has repeats, we can put in a minimum repeat inter interval there. So we could say a certain number of days. So we could say, you know, there needs to be 15 days between repeats. And this in particular was added because in New South Wales, there's restrictions on section four and section eight medications that require a minimum repeat interval before they can prescribe again. This next box here, script is for emergency supply, script owing. Uh, this is for, uh, you probably know better than me, but this is, this is for, this is for pharm when pharmacies have already dispatched the medication to the patient and that you're just doing the medication here, the script to send directly through to the pharmacy. If that is the case, pick that particular option. Then you'd put in this spot here, you'd put the email address to the pharmacy that dispensed the drug. So you'll need to look up the email address for that particular pharmacy and type it in here. And we'll send it directly to them. Alternatively, if we unclick that, if this is just a normal one with you've got the patient right then and there, you could send an electronic prescription to the patient via either SMS or email. Now, by default, the SMS will already be filled in, the SMS D number will already be filled in here from the patient's phone number, but you can override it just for this specific electronic prescription with another phone number that the patient would prefer. Maybe it's their, um, their daughter's phone number or maybe it's um, their, their um, social worker or something like that who you want to send the token to. Now, note it's not a full prescription, it's just a QR code token that, the, um, that can be used at the pharmacy to be scanned to produce the script. Alternatively, instead of SMS, they could have it sent to them via email. And once again, that email by, will default to whatever the email is for this particular patient. And you can override it just in this particular case for somebody else the patient would prefer that you email their um, their electronic prescription code to. You can't do SMS and email at the same time, uh, you just pick one of those or alternatively no electronic token. Now we'll note that if you're sending out an SMS or email that's sending them out from your electronic providing service so whether you're signed up with ERX or MediSecure, it'll be you. It won't be using your SMS credits or your email. That'll be sending them out from MediSecure or ERX. Alternatively, you can just use no electronic token instead of SMS or email. And regardless of whether you do SMS or email or not, you can get it to print you a paper token as well, which will print out the QR code. On the bit of paper. So remember it is just a QR code on a piece of paper, one of those uh, square barcode things that it's not a full script that gets sent out. So it's a QR code that you can then take that QR code to a participating pharmacy and then that participating pharmacy will be able to scan that code and dispense the medication. That's the, that's the trick at the moment, getting the participating pharmacy uh, because there's a number of the pharmacies um, are not yet compliant with that. So that's the main reason why it's taking a while um, for us to be allowed to send out um, version 32 to everyone. It, technically everyone could have it, but the only new feature within that is electronic prescribing. So um, you're, I would, in, for the moment, if you don't need electronic prescribing, there's no particular need for you to go to version 32. So I'll quickly show you there the um, what it looks like when they receive this electronic token on their phone. And there we go there. So on their phone, not sure if you can see it there, it's probably very small on your screens. You'll just get an, an SMS saying, click this link. If they click that link, they'll get the barcode on the right-hand side there. 
that the pharmacy, they can take to the pharmacy and scan that in. Alternatively, if they get sent an email, it will look like this. Once again, a link there, they'll click on that to get the QR code. Uh, it's strongly advised that you that you get the patient to check while they're still um, at the clinic to, to ensure that they have received either the SMS or the email. You don't want them to have to come back because it didn't go through or they put the wrong number in or something like that. You want them to confirm that there. An important detail, everyone's always keen on how to set this up. If we jump back into here, close out of that, close out of that. In order to set up, just enlarge that there. Excuse me. Ah, that's better. In order to set this up in the to, the the ePrescribe in your ZMed. Uh, you have to have your several well, several different things installed. Got a little whoops technology. So here's the checklist of what you require. Your site must be upgraded to ZMed32. You have to have your so in your your practice needs to be set up with the healthcare provider identifier. The doctor needs to be set up with their personalised uh, healthcare provider identifier, and each patient needs to be set up with their individual healthcare identifier. So you do need to set up what you do need to have configured either ERX or MediSecure, which you probably will have done for SafeScript. You need to enable electronic prescribing in the clinical show you where to set up those sections. So if we go into the management here, well, sorry, first, you'd want to make sure that you have your NASH certificate installed inside your ZMED. You probably already have that done by your IT or potentially even ZMED, but that will be inside Global options, the communications, and this particular screen here. We've got information on our ZMed website. It's global options, communications, SMD and my health record. We've got, info, we've got how to guides on our website on how to set up your NASH certificate when you receive it. Obviously, you only need to do that once for your particular site. Inside ZMed Office, however, once you've got that set up, it's going to management, practice setup. So we're in the practice one here, we need to set up the, the organizations, a healthcare practitioner identifier. So you could put the number in there or we could search the HI service. If you've got the number already, you could just search from there or if you don't have a number, you can use other details and it will attempt to search uh, the government's website to find out what your HPIO number is. Because we've already got the number there. You should be able to do a search. There you go. And it found, it confirmed that that was indeed our particular number. So like I say, if you're registered but you're not entirely sure of the number, you can try and use the other details option there. Anyway, you need that HPIO number set up in the practice details section. Each individual doctor, as you recall, also needs to be set up. You see the Philip Davis here, and there's his healthcare, his individual healthcare protect, um, practitioner ID. Once again, if you're not sure what it is, you can come up to this search HI service and you can search either by the specific number if you've got it 
all the other details. It'll attempt to use the details like name and speciality and so on to find this particular doctor. But seeing as we've already got the number, we can just search it that way to confirm it. There we go. Obviously, you only need to do that once for a practice and once for each doctor. The one thing that you'll be doing much more frequently is doing it on the individual patients. So I'll open a patient here. You'll notice that this particular patient has already been set up. We can see on the left-hand side of the patient's, patient's profile, we've got a green tick next to eHealth. That's because somebody's already put in the IHI number there and it's all confirmed. But let's see, often you'll be coming along. We can just clear those details out, not a problem. So usually it'll just be looking like this. You come into Amber Blair's site and I'll just say red on the side. So every time a patient comes in, just the same as you're checking the online PV regularly, Check to see whether eHealth has got the red X on it there, which means they're not currently connected to eHealth. You can go in there and just search. We can't expect the patient to know their IHI number, so that's why there's just the option to do search. It'll use all of their details and automatically fill those in there. It gives it the green tick of being connected to eHealth and also their electronic prescribing. So you do need the um, them to connect it to their eHealth identifier in order for the electronic prescribing to work. So lastly, back in clinical land here, you note from time to time, we need to cancel a prescription for some reason. So I'll open another patient here. So for whatever reason, maybe we uh, dispensed the wrong, we accidentally dispensed the wrong, uh, sorry, prescribed the wrong medication and sent out the code there, whichever. So if we go down to medications here, so there's a variety of medications that we've sent out for this particular patient. We can see if we click on one of these. It expands to show the different times we've prescribed this medication. You can see now there's an icon to the left of it there that shows that these particular, so we prescribed the medication on the 11th, we prescribed on the 3rd, on the 1st and so on. That icon to the left there indicates that those prescriptions were done via electronic prescribing. Click on one of these other ones here. See, this one here doesn't have the that same icon to the left there. That's because this one was prescribed on paper in the, in the traditional way. So these icons here indicate that these particular ones were prescribed electronically. See, this one here, just below it there, I hope it's not too small on your screens, uh, indicates that this particular one has been cancelled. So if we cancel it in ZMed here, so if we right click, we've got the option to do cancel script down here. If we do cancel that particular medication, it will make that code, the QR code that the patient has been sent, that will become invalid immediately. So if we make it, if we cancel it in here, ZMed will communicate with the prescribing bodies and send them through um, and will invalidate that QR code. Uh, just to confirm, or just to, sorry, to consolidate, remember with the, for both safe script and e-prescribing, need you to go inside the global options, need you go in the drugs module and, sit and, cho and choose either ERX or MediSecure, whichever one you had uh, that you set up a particular account with. You can Google both of those, ERX and MediSecure and see which one would best suit you. You do also have the option for electronic prescribing over here. And remember, you must tick electronic prescribing that we've got a certain amount of time that you could wait. That um, So this it's got 15 seconds in here because some sites 
can take a little while transmitting this information over the internet. By default, you're, when you make an electronic prescription, it will wait for up to 15 seconds for that to be sent out to either the SMS or the email. If you've got a, a and if it if it doesn't get there in that time, well, it won't always wait that 15 seconds. But if it's having some problems, it'll wait 15 seconds. If it doesn't think that it's happened within 15 seconds, it'll just cancel that and print a paper copy instead. If you're on a site that is having um, internet issues, but your internet is a bit slower than some, you might consider increasing this amount of time here from 15 seconds to something higher to get it to wait a little bit longer. Obviously, it won't, it won't definitely make your prescription go through. If you're having serious internet issues, maybe no extra waiting time uh, will solve the problem there on the prescribing. Like I say, that version 32, we'll be releasing that to the wider audience as soon as, as soon as we can. But the main issue at the moment is getting enough pharmacies across using it. Because obviously, it, seeing as the electronic prescription doesn't just mean that it's sending out a whole prescription to somebody's email or SMS, it sends out just that QR code. And unfortunately, at the moment, not enough of the pharmacies have had uptake on those uh, QR codes yet. But that's turning around a lot and we're seeing a lot of movement now uh, across to that. So that's all I had for you today. Um, let me um, know in the chat section there on the right hand side, if you had any extra questions that I can answer.